Is spending $400 on all these brushes really worth it? In this video, we're going to talk about what the difference is between a cheap brush and an expensive brush and why you should care. Stay tuned. Okay, here we are today. Good brush, bad brush. I got Journeyman John with me and we are going to talk about brushes and bristles and what's a good brush, what's a bad brush. What brush should you buy? Should you spend $5 for a brush or should you spend $25 for a brush? What do you think, John? We've got so many brushes. We've got like 17 different kinds of brushes here sitting brushes, there. Brushes. Which brush should you brush with? Brushes brushes and there are so many this is i mean this is i mean just a few of your options to choose from and literally i mean what brush are you going to buy this is this is what you got i don't need from. all those brushes because i've got the two big brushes <laughs> we and... literally own all these brushes yeah so um <laughs> you got an interesting brush right there that's made when uh 1950 this is a black china bristle stain brush this thing's kind of cool we we got it from a, a client when we were working they're like hey would you guys use these i think you picked them up at an antique shop or a yard sale something like that and we've never used it because we think it's too cool it is too cool i'd hate to actually get paint on it i we love that thing and it's kind of showed up here and there in some of our videos and so there's it's, even a blonde horse hair in there. <laughs> and that is legitimately a um natural bristle brush right there what would you use that for Natural uh, bristles. Uh, stains, varnishes, um, yeah. anything that's kind of alkyd based. So what we really want to, one of the questions we want to answer, this is a $5 brush here. And you know, should you walk it into a paint store, should you spend $5 for a brush? Or we got a brush here. How much is this one, John? That brush is about a $75 brush, $100 if you buy it with all of the goodies that it comes with. <laughs> Should you spend that kind of money for this brush or that brush? I or mean, should you go in the middle with a $25 brush? It, it's, yeah, I don't even, I mean, where do you even start? So this is a, a $5 brush and, and I purchased this one at a big box store. And you know, can, could I paint a door jam with this? Could I paint a window sill with this and get good results? I believe I can get decent results with this $5 brush. Mm -hmm. But what's gonna be the big difference between this brush and say one of our favorite brushes, we really, really like um, Wooster and um, Corona's Chinex bristle brushes. So that, which brush is that one there, John? This is the Wooster Chinex FTB, FTP brush. So why do you like that brush right there so much? Um, one, I like the Chinex bristle, which is a special bristle made by DuPont, and it cleans super, super easy. So I don't know if it's like coated in Teflon or what the deal is with it, but it's very stiff, cleans very easy, great for exteriors. What I like about the Wooster brand of their Chinex bristle brush is when you look at the brush, it is cut like a 1950s flat top. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't know that was coming. I didn't know that was coming. But John, you brought up, you brought up um, one point and the mm -hmm. thing cleans really, really easily and very fast. And that's one of the things you're going to notice if you really take two brushes like this, this $5 brush and that brush, and use it for a whole day and then try to clean it. Mm -hmm. The cleaning is going to be significantly faster with that brush and you're going to get that one, I would say, 100% clean with very, very little effort. With this brush right here, it's going to take a lot of effort to clean it and I don't think you're going to be able to get all the paint off the And bristles. that's just on the first use, not to mention the second, third, fourth, and fifth use. It gets harder and harder to clean as the brush gets older. And part of the reason it, for that is, is a lot of people don't understand but if you put the bristles under a microscope like a DuPont um, one of these Chinex bristles under a microscope they're extremely smooth and, and the paint just wants to just come off them very easily these they don't even tell you with this brush what it is but it's probably like a polyester um, brush or maybe a polyester blend but probably a polyester and if you look under a microscope the, the bristles are gonna be extremely jagged and the paint does not come off a bristle like that very easily and another thing is with that brush right there how many bristles came off that brush while you're painting it since you purchased it um, none that I've seen it, it may have shed one very first using it but I don't think it even shed 
one. So I, I've used a Krona and I've used a Wooster. I've used, I mean, even we'll throw out a, a Purdy one. I've used this Purdy brush, not this specific one, but this brand and this style a lot. These brushes, I've, I've used this Lucas brush, you know, a handful of times. Uh, the bristles, the bristles. It's very, very rare, if ever, do the bristles ever come out of them. We use the Picasso Pro Forma. Love that one. Not a bristle came out. This, um, these cheaper bristle, cheaper brushes. It's very common for the bristles to come out when you're brushing, say, a door jam or windowsill. And how difficult is it? I mean, what you could just pick it off, or and could it just? Yeah, you can pick it off until you've got something that you're you're really concerned about the finish on, and now you've got a little picking off mark. Even if you're using tweezers, where that bristle was, it's going to have left a little indentation in your finish. I feel like I could like blow on this, and a bristle would, and then I can make a wish, <laughs> yeah. and the the paint fairy would and, make it come true. And it's it's so it, I don't know if you can see in the video, maybe the the GoPro video right there, 4K. They might be able to see it, but. The, the bristles, if you just barely you know, move, um, pull them a little bit, they begin sagging and falling apart. So it is an extremely low, low quality bristle. Let's talk about the life of brushes. And this is another reason why you would purchase a, you know, 20, that's about 20, $25 for that. Yeah, you know, those two brushes. Yeah, I believe about $25 for the Wooster. These are two brushes that we really, really like. We keep them in our vans. And so 20, $25 versus $5. What do you think, John, the life of this brush would be versus the life of that brush? Well, I guess it depends how far you want to run a brush into the ground, but when it comes down to it, um, this, like Chris said earlier, the the filaments on the bristle end up becoming more and more jagged and holding more and more paint on, and then that paint hardens and dries, and what'll happen is you'll start to get a hard spot right here in the middle, and it'll work its way out, and it's gonna hold less and less paint. Well, with a cheaper filament like that, it's going to happen faster. My guess is a brush like that, you're gonna get five maybe six uses out of it before you're going to be to the point where it's not holding nearly the amount of paint that it did at the beginning. Versus if you've got something like a, a Chinex bristle where it's going to clean out better and you're, you're gonna get more uses out of it. In fact, that's one of the reasons, uh, like this year we're switching to having all of our new guys even use Chinex brushes because we're going to get a lot more life out of these brushes than we would a contractor grade brush. Yeah, so in talking life of the brush, how long it's gonna last, you know, the, the cleaning process, part of the cleaning process, we take the brushes and we tap them to try to get some of the excess water out. These cheaper brushes, not this one specifically, but I would say one of the local paint stores, we used to use um, their branded brush as kind of a contractor grade brush. The epoxies, I'm not epoxy expert, but the epoxy, a lot of times would break free, the, the bristles would break free and the whole thing would come apart. And that was, I would say probably like one out of uh, 20 brushes would do that. We, we've never had any of these high-end brushes do that at all. So I think the, the, the gluing process, the epoxy process is a lot better in these type of uh, brushes. And then these brushes, the ferrule itself, the, the metal is nailed on there and less likely for it to come off. This, it's not even mailed, it's nailed, it's just pushed on and got a couple little crimp marks. So very likely that this thing could come off if it hit or banged on anything or if you're hitting on your, on your um, foot to tap it dry. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Longivia brushes, you know, typically as professional painters, to me, I, this is like a five use brush, I would think. You'd use it five times and it's not going to be usable anymore. And I'm thinking five times is probably, you know, really giving it. <laughs> um, generous, maybe. Very generous. So a brush like that, how long would that last versus something like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be the dogs. Always adds an exciting element to stuff when you get animal sound effects. <laughs> Animal sandwiches, at least you don't hear them as loud. Angel, be quiet! That actually wants to bark at. Now, in the office, and we wanted to talk about paintbrushes and all the little sound effects that goes along with it. Somebody just got an alert. I think. <laughs> sound test, video test, sound <laughs> test, drums. Um, we'll see if it's working. How many uses do you think you would get out of it? Well, so far, um, this brush has had probably 
60 uses since we've gotten it this last fall probably more than probably because I use this brush on just about every job every day and so we're actually probably talking closer to a hundred uses in the last six months that this brush has had and it's still yeah. soft down here where the the bristles meet the ferrule it still um, has held its shape relatively well and still cuts a really good line and we are painters, we're not mathematicians, but I think if you do the simple math... Those numbers, they work. They work <laughs> out somehow. You can you can kind of start to figure it out that it is... I know it, it is hard to put the $25 out on, the, on you know, the table or the counter and pay for a brush like that. But if you think in the long term, this brush is going to pay for itself. Let's talk about cleaning. Uh, to me, like minute-wise, I think... How, how many minutes does it take you to clean a brush like that? <laughs> These Chinex bristles specifically, it, it's a lot faster because like Chris said, the, the paint's not sticking in there. I think it's got a smoother bristle to it as well. Um, two minutes? About two minutes to clean About that brush. Minutes. So, and I think with cleaning this brush right here, this exact brush, if we use the same exact paint, it's going to take to me probably triple that amount of time. It's going to take five to six minutes at least to clean this brush. True, but I guess over the course of the life of the brush, you're only spending 15 minutes cleaning it, and I've spent 200 minutes cleaning this. <laughs> now, see, now the mathematician right there. Well, now we're getting the, tricky. Now we're really getting tricky, and he's confused me, but. If they last the same amount of time, we'll try to make it like um, simple. If they both last yeah. you know, 200 you know, jobs, you can see how much more time you had spent cleaning this brush versus that brush. And that's not even counting the time you have to clean bristles off of what you've painted because it shed oh, them all over the so, place. So, so annoying. Um, and then you have, typically when you buy a good quality brush, here's a good example. This is a Stallmeister brush. And, and a lot of people might think that brushes are just typically all brushes are just throwaway brushes they don't last very long this brush is designed to last so long that as the bristles wear down literally wear down and get shorter it has this string right here you untie the string and you'll begin releasing loops of string down so your bristles will be the same length again so you you have to think of professional type brushes like this in terms of a tool that you're going to be using for a lot of years i would they think um, like this company manufactures these brushes, these painters that use these brushes over in like Sweden and Switzerland, some of those countries uh, where they're manufactured and used heavily. These things are going to last these guys 20 years at least. They, they have them for that long. I think another misconception is that you just need one brush. As a professional painter, there are different kinds of brushes for different tasks. And so this is a Chinax bristle brush. It is great for exteriors. I would even cut some of our interior lines with it, but it is not something I would use if I were brushing out trim or if I had certain surfaces or textures that I was brushing on. Then I'm gonna to switch to a different kind of a brush, right? Absolutely, and so I don't have one, that, uh, this one, my hair is a clear cut brush right here. So if you take this brush right here, this one is extremely flagged and you think, oh, it feels really nice. It's gonna lay out a really nice finish, but you're not gonna be able to cut a straight line with this. This thing, uh, an inexpensive brush right here, you can't be fooled by the flagging, the softness to it. This brush right here, this is a clear cut brush by Purdy, and this thing was designed to cut really, really straight lines. And even as a professional painter, as is, is many thousands and thousands of feet of um, ceilings I've cut in, there's no way I'm gonna be able to cut in as straight of a line as this and not nearly as fast. So you're gonna be more faster and efficient, more efficient with a brush designed to cut in, but this brush would be more of an all around brush than even this brush right here. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, what does any of this have to do with flags? What Chris is talking about with flag is if you take that bristle- Not the American flag. Not the American flag. Or your country's flag. Not the British flag. flag not another kind of a pirate paint, flag. Paintbrush bristle flags. So it's like if you look at the bristle, it'll look like it has split ends. Like there's little pieces coming off in different directions. And what that does is those are, they act basically like little fingers that hold on to more paint. So the more flagged your brush is, the more paint it's gonna hold. But it also isn't as, as stiff and strong at the tip there. And so it's not going to cut as straight of a line. So like this Picasso Proform brush, there is not a lot of flagging, just like that pretty clear cut. And so it's not gonna hold as much paint, but it is going to cut a very nice straight line with a nice stiff bristle on the tip versus a brush that has a lot of flagging but can hold a lot of paint. 
When it does come, when it comes to handles and stuff, you're gonna see all these brushes. I mean, the handles, a lot of that is just personal preference. You know, a cheaper brush, all these are wood and some of them are hard wood, some of them are a little bit softer woods. This really cheap brush right here, this is just a hollow plastic. And I think, you know, if you stepped on this or something, it might break, it's extremely cheap. A lot of these, these brushes here are weighted and balanced really well with the woods that they're using and the types of woods and they're sanded and they just fit and feel a lot better in your hand than a piece of plastic. And so maybe you're not a professional painter, maybe you're just a do-it-yourselfer or a contractor that does some painting occasionally. And so, you know what, maybe just using a cheap handle, maybe it not being balanced, maybe you don't really care about that. As a professional though, this is the tool that you're using for hours and hours and hours. And I mean, how many miles of lines do you think you've cut in over your painting? Oh, period? I think I've been to China and back a few times. A couple of times. A couple times. And so when, when this is what you do over and over and over again, those kind of things really do matter. It's the same reason why if you're a contractor, there are certain brands of tool, higher end brands of tool that you're gonna be willing to put the money out for versus something that is a Harbor Freight knockoff, right? It's yeah. gonna last you longer, it's gonna work better, and it's gonna be easier for you to use. I think a good example is um, why do some people buy DeWalt versus Ryobi? Or That's why do some people buy Festool versus um, even DeWalt? And even why do some people buy a Toyota or or a Lexus and mm -hmm. so it, it's that there is there is a big difference in quality when you step up in price I mean now price isn't everything but it's typically gonna give you an idea of the quality of brush you're buying how long it's gonna last how it's gonna perform for you and um, and anything else so you know like you said that it's it's not going to be everything but you've got to decide at one point or another if you're deciding between the um, I don't know where it went the five dollar brush and a twenty five dollar brush um, what are you getting for that and what are you losing um, by saving that money to me the amount of time that I'll spend cutting a line with this plus the anxiety plus the just that mental energy where you've got to go a little slower and be more careful with the line versus this is going to pay for itself in one job um, just for how quickly how, how much more quickly I'm going to do it and how much better I'm going to feel when it's all done. In, in, in the end too, you know, I could take this brush, I could brush a windowsill, I could brush a door jam and get really good results. I, I wouldn't say- I've seen him use a duster brush <laughs> and cut lines just I, I to have. show a guy up. Like. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm going to be faster and more efficient with say a Corona Tynex brush right here. I'm gonna get, a, if you're really, really picky about your results, you are gonna get better results with a better brush. That's what it really just comes down to. So take shop around, I mean, Think about it. I mean, think about the money you're gonna spend up front and think about how hard your job's gonna be, how easy it is gonna be gonna cut in a line with something like this versus a, a you know, a different type of brush. And, you know, we'll get a lot of objections about like, well, it's not about the tool, it's about whose hand the tool is in, which was a very awkward way to put all of that. But it, <laughs> there, it, it really awkward. does come down to like, like, yeah, if you've got the skill, you can get it done. Why beat your head against a brick wall if you don't need to? Yeah, and I, and I guess I, I'm, you know, part of that, I guess I'm not sure what I'm trying to say here, but I did use contractor brushes for probably 10 to 12 years of my career. And, and it wasn't until I got a lot of suggestions from my social media, people saying, you should try a Corona, you should try a, a Wooster, and specifically those two brushes, we kept hearing over and over, a Chinex brush, and I'm just like, I mean, these, $10 brushes are just fine to me. And they were about $10, $12, the, the contractor brands. And when we finally, the first one I tried was a, a Corona Chinex bristle brush. And the, I don't know the model, you might know the model it was, but it, um, Excalibur. the Excalibur. I was absolutely blown away, absolutely amazed. Cannot believe that I wasn't 10 years ago using those brushes. And it made me a faster, more efficient painter. And it improved, it improved me as a painter just right off the bat that day. 
So. And that was the beauty of social media and comments and things like that. So, you know, you guys do let us know what brushes you like in the comments below. Let us know um, what some of your favorites are. Let us know some of the brushes that you want to try out because, like, I mean, we've got Stahlmeister, we've got different stain brushes, Proform, Wooster, Purdy, Corona, um, True Val, I don't know brush was. Maybe you really want to try that one out oh. just so you can say that you did. Yeah, I don't know. We got all kinds of, we got blaze brushes. We've got, um, I don't know. These are the Cheryl Williams contractor brand brushes. They're everywhere, all over the boards. But just, and let us know which ones to try out and let us know why you like them. Yeah. What, what specifically you like about those brushes. We get a lot of people just telling us, oh, you tried this brush, try that brush. Just let us know why you like them. We'd really like to know. And so once we start testing them, we can like look, you know, look for those things that you're talking about. Anyways, we're going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've learned something about brushes. Don't forget we're on Instagram, Idaho Painter, Facebook, The Idaho Painter. We have a website, John. TheIdahoPainter.com. Where we have a Paint Life store where you can purchase our shirts and hats and some of the tools that we really, really like. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on our next video. Out.